every now and again in your programs, you're going to have to sort data. And you're going to want that data sorted, whether in ascending, meaning smallest to largest, or descending, largest to smallest. So this is a program I created in Visual Studio C Sharp. It was a console application. You can go call it whatever you want. And then I created an array. I called it AI age with the Hungarian notation of array of integers for age. And it's going to be an array of integer. And then here we actually say, yes, it really is an array of integer. Go create it. And I'm not only going to create it, but I'm going to go ahead and load up all the values. And so it sizes it and fills in each element of the array. So I have five values, 7, 1, 4, 5, and 2. Since there's five values, this in, in position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3, and position 4. Whatever the length of the array is, remember arrays are zero based, and so they have to start at zero. And so the last element of an array that is five elements long would be four, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I then create another variable of type int, and it's just called I hold value. Uh, this loop prints off all the elements of the array, just so you can see them on the screen. And then I print two blank lines to make it a little more readable. Here's where the sort actually occurs. And it's called a bubble sort, meaning the smallest value, if we do an ascending sort, is going to bubble up to the top of the array, or it's going to keep moving up until it hits the first element of the array. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to compare positions of the array. What's the value in one position compared to the value of another position? And if one value is less than the other, then we have to swap them. But in order to swap them, we have to store the value we want to swap out to a temporary variable. Because if we try to store another value over what's already in the array element, it will wipe it out, and then you'll lose it. So let's see how this actually works. We're going to go ahead and run this program. And let's go ahead. I set a breakpoint right there just by clicking. You can click, set a breakpoint. Let's run it. And it starts the program. And here we are in our breakpoint. And I set up a whole bunch of different um, variables in the debugger just so you can watch what happens. And we have two loops that we're going to be working with. The first loop says, let's start at position 0. And as long as that variable, which is currently 0, is less than the length of the array, which is 5, we're going to drop into another loop. Is 0 less than 5? True. Drop into this loop. So we drop into it. And then we say, create another variable. Let's set it to start at the length of the array minus 1. The length of the array is 5. Minus 1 is 4. And then we say, is 0, well, currently, let's see what happens here, is 4 greater than 0. Now, the 0 comes from this outer loop. The outer loop is what's going to make you go through every single element of the array until it is completely sorted. The inner loop is just going to work with one level of the array at a time. And once we bubble up to the top position, then we'll say, that one's good, and let's leave it alone, lock it into place, and do the other ones. Let's just keep watching what happens. Yes, 4 is greater than 0, so drop into your loop. Then we say, is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So go to the array in position 3, which has a value of 5, and see if it's greater than whatever is in position 4. So we're saying, is 5 greater than 2? And it is greater than 2. And so we need this 2 to bubble up to the front of the array. We need it to be in front of 5 because it's smaller. So what we have to do is we drop into the array and we say, go grab the value that was in position 3. And let's just store it into the temporary variable I hold value. So that now holds the value of 5. But what do you notice in position 3? There's still a 5 there. If I had just said take 2 and put it in position 3 and take 3 and put it in position 4, we would have taken a 2, put it into there, 5 would have been gone. We didn't have the value anymore because we overwrote it. That's why you have to hold it off. So now that we hold it off, we came in and we did a sort or a swap. We said take this value and put it into there. 
Now what we need to do is grab whatever we held off, which is five, and put it in the item we just left. So let's see if it puts it down there. And it did. So we now swapped the values in those two elements. Let's go ahead and come back up to the loop. We decrement I sort two, which was four. So now we're going to decrement and we're going to go to three. Because since we worked with three and four, now we want to work with three and two. Let's see if that's what happens. Is three still greater than zero? Yes. Okay. Drop into here. We now say if three minus one, which is two, is greater than what's ever in three. So in other words, we're going to say is this greater than Sorry, is this greater than that? And it is. So what do we need to do? We have to swap it so that the lower value can bubble up to the top. But in order to swap it, the first thing we have to do, hold off the value that we're going to replace, which is 4. Grab the next value, 2, and put it into where 4 was. And then take the hold value and put it back into where 2 was. You see what's happening to the number two? It's bubbling up to the top because it's smaller. Decrement. So now we're going to decrement from three and go down to two because we know so far two is less than this position and this position. So now we check again and say, is this value greater than this value, which it's not. So we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. Decrement. Now we say, is this value greater than this value, which it is? So we need to swap it. Here's where we swap. And so what do you know about position zero of the array? The smallest value out of all the elements has now bubbled up to the top. It doesn't mean it's in complete order yet, because we still have to do all the rest of the elements. So we get out of the inner loop and come back out to the top loop. It said start at zero, but what do we know about position zero? It has the lowest value now. So let's go ahead and increment that counter to go to one. Is one less than the length of the array? Yes. Drop into the inner loop. Now we're going to leave one, this position alone, position zero, and we're going to work with one, two, three, and four. So we're going to check four and five. I'm sorry. Positions three, 4 and 3. Is 4 greater than 5? No. Leave it alone. Decrement. Is 2 greater than 4? No. Leave it alone. Decrement. Is 7 greater than 2? Yes. Swap. Decrement. We're done with that loop. We get back out. Now we know that whatever is in position 1 and position 0 are locked into place and good. So we increment I sort to go to 2. Check to make sure it's less than the length of the array. Drop into here again. Notice that we always start I sort to the length minus 1. So we start at the bottom 2 and keep bubbling up. And as long as our counter is less than, I'm sorry, as long as our counter is greater than, Whatever position we want to work with, we stay in the loop. So now we drop in, and now we're going to go look at position 4. Is position, whatever is in position 3, which is 4 minus 1, is that greater than that? No, it's not. Leave it alone. Decrement. Is that greater than that? Yes, it is. Swap it. So we swap that. Come back up, decrement, I sort. Is 2 greater than there? Nope. So now we're done with that loop. Get back out. Now we know that positions 0, 1, and 2 are all locked into place. We increment the outer counter. Drop in again. We start I sort at 4, the last element. And now we compare, is this greater than that? Yes, it is. Swap it. Decrement. 3 greater than 3. No. Get out of the loop. 
increment is 4 less than the length of the array still? Yes. Drop into here one more time. But we didn't need to sort it. We're all done, and the array is now sorted. One, two, four, five, seven. It's called a bubble sort. But you have to have some type of holding area. Otherwise, you're going to lose that value. And that's how a bubble sort works in C sharp with a one dimensional array of integers.